Hello, so this video is going to go over some other tools that you can use in Canvas, mainly collaborations. I'll probably briefly show you things like Lockdown Browser and talk about the pros and cons of some of those tools that you have available. So I have gone through videos with Google Docs and off also just finished a video that was more had more details about Microsoft Office Online. If you create a document for your students in those tools, you can use something called collaborations if you want people to collaborate on one of those documents. And you can collaborate in any way you see fit. I mean, it could be peer review. It could be going through an assignment or something like that. So to give an example, I started teaching online in 2009. It was my first job. I had never taught online before. I had never even taken an online class before. So I had to learn a lot of little strategies really quick, and I certainly made some mistakes. One of the things that I found really useful when I taught online is that um, I did set it up at the time to have one synchronous class meeting, meaning that we would meet once a week um, in a synchronous chat situation video. There was video involved. Uh, there was mainly screen sharing, so you could see a little picture of me, just like you see right now, but it was even smaller, if I remember correctly. And I could share my screen with my students. And one of the things that I did a lot was I would spend probably the first half hour going over an assignment, um, answering questions, also maybe doing activities, so half hour to 45 minutes. The last 15 minutes, we would look at, an, at a sample document. And so if you wanted to do that and have students actually kind of collaborate and interact with it, collaborations might be a good tool for you. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is in my test course, so it's probably not going to look as, as neat and orderly as yours might because names will show up after you click on Add Collaboration over here. If you do want to learn more, there's a link that kind of explains different ways to use it, and it gives you written instructions with screenshots to follow through. So I'm not going to go into too much detail there in terms of that, and I probably won't be able to in my test course. I just don't want to go into my actual courses so you see names of students right now. So if you click on the red button in Canvas with plus collaboration, you'll notice you have two options. You can go to Google Apps, or you can go to Microsoft Office 365, which would include PowerPoint, Word, Excel, everything in the Office suite. Um, Google Apps, that would also include anything in the Google Apps suite for, you know, Drive. So it would be Google Docs, it would be um, the Google Doc PowerPoint, all those things that you have available there. So you would click on one of them. And I'm going to do Google Apps because I do have my Google pretty much set up pretty well here. So it's going to have a little but a little menu item up here called kind. What that just means if it's a document spreadsheet or presentation that you're going to share. I'm a writing instructor. I'll usually use some kind of document. Down here you'll see names of your students. So you could do groups for this if you wanted to. You could have the whole class work on something. If you wanted, told a student, hey, I really want to spend some time talking to you or working on your document with you, you could use this tool, but there are other ways. You know, you could email it. So my best advice is, of course, keep keep things simple. Do what you know. Um, do what you're comfortable with, but I'm just going over these tools because they're probably good for you to have available. And so you would select who you want and you would hit submit. And the instructions that you have linked here, I do believe go over what, what that looks like. But what you're going to see is you're going to see an embedded document more than likely. So it'll be Google Docs, it'll be Office 365, it'll be spreadsheet presentation, and you and the students can go over that. Of course, this is meant for anything that's synchronous. So a synchronous stuff is probably not going to work the best here. Um, but you could probably still try to do that, and I'm pretty sure people could still collaborate if it if the whole thing is open. But in my example that I gave, we were meeting synchronously and going over documents that way. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about, and that's the lockdown browser. So if you click on that, and by the way, to get to this, you would go to settings, and you would go to navigation. You can see I've done this so much that it just automatically opens to navigation for me and you would make sure that Lockdown Browser 
was enabled from down here. So you just drag and drop, you know. And then you would hit save. Don't forget to save. It's really easy to forget to save. And go back to home, and then I'm going to go to lockdown browser. And the nice thing about it is it does give you some video tutorials. What this is for is it's for if you want students to take a quiz and you are worried about something like cheating. And what it does is that if it's enabled in your quiz, it's going to not allow students to open up another browser window. Um, of course, there's some drawbacks to this. So students have phones, of course. If they are on their phone, it's going to be easy for them just to look up answers on their phone. Um, also, I've seen students who have Windows 10 have some technical problems with lockdown browser. They've had to go to Gorilla Geeks to get it fixed. In this kind of situation, they're probably not going to be able to get the kind of IT support they might need. And so you can still use lockdown browser, especially if you've already used it in your courses. I think, you know, you've already set up a situation where most students maybe have access, but maybe that's changed. And so what I would do is we might have to spend some time rethinking how we give exams, rethinking how we give quizzes. Um, for example, my quizzes right now are just going to be open book. They're just, they're just that way. And so um, I've also asked some, changed some questions where they're more kind of, you know, essay style, you know, do some like interpretation or analysis exercises here. So that's how I've kind of played it with some of my exams that, or quizzes I give in class. I don't give a lot because I'm a writing instructor. We do a lot more writing. Um, so in some ways I think I have it easy in that sense, but there's going to be challenges I face with that as well. So I just wanted to give you some kind of advice and, or some kind of thoughts on Lockdown Browser and where that's available. It's only for quizzes, by the way. So you don't do this for anything but quizzes, and you have to make sure to set it within quizzes if you do want to add Lockdown Browser to that. So that is all I have for you. If you have any questions, I guess you can let me know. Thank you. Bye.